everyone. Welcome to the Golden Ratio Podcast. I am Jen, JR Mom, joined as always by JR Dad. Hi. How's it going, JR Dad? Good. We're I'm a little tired. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a hell of a week. Why do I always say that uh, in these podcasts? Well, you're an old man. <laughs> Your <laughs> words and mine. It's uh, 10 a.m. on a Saturday, so our cocktail of the week is Jared Dad's coffee. <laughs> Jared Dad, all right, so Jared Dad makes pour over coffee, and he's got this whole little setup that I don't entirely understand. I do not make coffee, it involves I, incantations, jigs, and tactical delays. <laughs> so, a couple weeks ago, I was up in Maryland to go to my cousin's wedding, and uh, my mom was also going to the wedding. I actually went as her date. I wasn't invited, so I snuck in as my mom's date. Plus one. As a plus one, yeah. <laughs> my dad didn't want to go. I wanted to go, so it worked out. So she was staying at the Maryland house with me, and she is a big coffee drinker, and I'm like, well, this is what we have. <laughs> we used to have a big coffee machine that made 10 cups at a time, but I think we got rid of it. We also had a curry at some point that we got rid of. We had a, a single cup with the little pods. Did we? 100% yes. Pods? Yeah. You were a pod coffee drinker for a while. At the office, because it was free. Oh, we had pod thing at home. Okay. Anyway, so now we've got this set up. From, it, there's a kettle, and then there's a weird plastic device that sometimes holds the coffee and sometimes shoots coffee out of the bottom. It's a funnel. Where, <laughs> Ish. But you put the coffee, it, coffee seeps in it? Yes. Steeps in yes, it? Yes, it touches the water. So we get all this equipment out, and we're looking at it. I was like... This is what we have to make coffee. Good luck, Good luck mom. <laughs> uh, she's like, how do you get the coffee out of the thing? I'm like, I'm not sure. I'm like, <laughs> this, if you push it, this thing moves. I'm, I'm not sure. So <laughs> I think I had bought you a pour over coffee to go bottle. Mm hmm. So it basically has like a little metal basket for the coffee. And then it turned, we did eventually figure out you pour the coffee over that and it goes into the mug. At first, we just put the coffee in there and put the hot water in the mug and then just let it steep in there. And that didn't work. And you have, then you have everything mixed. Well, the coffee was in the basket oh. and the basket was sitting in the hot water, but we didn't pour the hot water over the basket, yes, yes. which we did eventually figure out. And she drank it. But the next day, she's like, I don't need any coffee this morning. <laughs> Which is both a lie and also not what she, that she always needs coffee. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, but she didn't make coffee the second day. Oof. So maybe we do need to have like a pod Keurig in case people come over and you're not there because I don't know how to use that thing. I think we had like a single coffee machine kind of like the way they had in hotels. We can make like one or two cups at a time. Because that's my whole point. I don't drink 12 cups of coffee at home. I just wanted to make one. At okay, a time. this is boring. Now, no, moving on. No, it's exciting. <sighs> no. This is the kind of exciting detail that will be available on Clean OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, I'm not selling it hard, am I? <laughs> if you start in OnlyFans, I 100% support you talking about your coffee drinking preferences and habits <laughs> and whatever. But anyway, that's our cocktail of the week. I'll have uh, to pay people to listen to me. That's the reverse. People will 100% pay for this, but it's like eight people as opposed to the 10,000 people who listen to our podcast every week. Oh, interesting. All right. Carry okay. on. Um, there are more exciting things going on. We, we have, man, we have a lot of updates. Of course, the main one being Hopper T dog of three legs. She appears to be missing a leg. I don't know what the heck. It literally looks like someone has photoshopped her leg out of reality. It's very strange. It's a little disconcerting to us. Hops doesn't seem troubled. No, so let's do the chronological. Um, obviously, we talked last week after we had her up in Miami and she got the biopsy and then we were waiting on the biopsy results. And so I'm like, literally like, I had a what did I have? A deposition. Yeah. Was prep, that prep and then the deposition? The yeah. actual deposition. Was that Tuesday? Yeah. So you're like on the record being recorded for a deposition. So you can't stop and take a phone call in the middle of that. So I was like, dear dad, you're in charge of my phone. You are to go nowhere without my phone in case they call us with the biopsy results on hops. I was good. You did a great job. Uh, they did not. And, and that would have been a little bit early. Like Wednesday was kind of the earliest we were expecting it. And... So she had a biopsy scar. That was, she had an a, incision. That's a minor surgery. And yeah. With a, not staples. It was stapled closed. Yeah. And she had been doing fine up until Tuesday. I mean, it hurt as much as it had hurt before. 
but she seemed okay. And um, Wednesday, I put her on the paddleboard, which was like, I probably shouldn't have. I, I don't think that's what caused the problem here for what it's worth. Um, you know, that would get some water potentially on the incision. But by the end of our paddleboard trip, you could tell that she was in a lot of pain. And that could be that she was laying on it. But I looked at it and one of the staples had pulled out. The incision had like opened up. And I'm like, oh, that's great. <laughs> like, <clears throat> that's not good. And you could tell that she was very uncomfortable she had been kind of her previous level of discomfort and now it was really bad. So we called the vet and we're like, look, you know, this has opened up. Obviously that's bad. You know, even if we do have to amputate it, which we are sort of expecting, we still, you don't want it to get infected and all kinds of stuff. Um, So we made an appointment and brought her up to the vet. This is a vet in Marathon. Our vet. Yeah. yeah. The Marathon vet. And while we were there, we, uh, so GR dad took her up. I am, you know, on the phone talking with our one of our really amazing vets up there i get a text from the vet in miami while hops is in the room and i'm on the phone with the biopsy results and then a tech walks into the room and gets dr lisa and is like i got a you know i got this vet from miami on the phone so he texts me he calls her while we're there it's a, a, a total team effort yeah um so the biopsy is showed that she did have cancer, synovial sarcoma, which is actually a pretty rare cancer. Um, Freaking hops. So it can spread, obviously. I mean, as pretty much all cancers can. Um, it did not in her, kind of skipping ahead. They did check chest x-rays and stuff, which is good. But um, when we had her up at the vet on Wednesday, um, she was running a fever, you know, there was some infection in the thing, which obviously didn't happen for me taking her paddle boarding a couple hours before. Um, though I still feel a little bad about that. I shouldn't have done that. She, liked she loved it. it so much, but I was going to say she loved it. I, I it's have all water on the bridge. Now there's no harm. <laughs> look, there's she's no, right look. now. Look at it. She's over there taking a drink. She's amazing. So she's doing very well. So anyway, So we're like, well, this is bad. Like she has an infection in this thing. It's very painful. And obviously the leg has to come off. Like that's the option at this point. Mm -hmm. And so we're talking to the doctor in Miami. When can we do it? (laughs) They're like, when can you be here? I'm like, tomorrow, now. Like, when can you do it? Yeah. And then I get like an automated message. They have an app. So I get an automated scheduling message that's like next Wednesday. And I was like, "Eh." I mean, okay. October 6th. It was the first available one on that app, right? Yeah. And so, um, but the vet up there, he's like, I don't need to do this. Like you want a surgeon to do it, but it doesn't have to be me. Like there's, it's a, any, anybody can do this surgery. And so our vet, you know, we're kind of talking to her in her office while I'm texting with the Miami guy, he's talking to her and she's like, well, we have a surgeon who does surgery here in marathon. He is based in Miami, but he comes down here once a week and does surgery. And we're like, great. Is he there now? He can do it now. And uh, he couldn't, the problem is that when the dogs have surgery, you want them to be monitored overnight. And so our vet is now closed at night. And so he has to bring a tech or have a tech that stays at the hospital overnight with the dogs. And he wasn't sure that he would have one for when he was going to be there, whenever he's doing surgery next. And they're like, but if, I mean, we're, we're now have left the vet and are talking to our vet. We went out to dinner. We're talking to her at dinner in the car on the way home. She was amazing. She was talking to us until like seven o'clock and back and forth with the surgeon and all this stuff. So in any case, this is Wednesday night, you know, 6 30 PM. She is talking to him and they're like, tomorrow morning, like have her in Miami tomorrow morning. He'll do the surgery tomorrow, which is exactly the answer that I want. Right. <laughs> like, this, is, no. this is the vet who comes down here on Tuesdays, but he said, if the dog comes to me up here, I can do it up here in Miami. Yeah. And yeah. we're like, fine. And they have a 24 hour <laughs> clinic. Yeah. They have an emergency room and, and there's, you know, it's a big specialty clinic. So there's always people there. So that's uh, frankly better. While it's, it would be nice to have the surgery done here having her in a place with a lot of like very trained people who are used to dealing with like, and have a lot of facilities there for that. Like, that's great. So, uh, we, GR dad brought her up there on Thursday. 
Yeah, I left. What? 7 a.m. Thursday morning. Yeah, for a 10.30 appointment. Just, just a side note. This surgeon, the place that did the biopsy is next door to it in Miami. And the eye clinic that Remy went to is like five doors down. It's like veterinary Vet alley <laughs> in Miami uh, near the elevated train there by the University of Miami. It's very weird that I look across the street from where I was on Thursday and I was like, oh, that's where we got the biopsy done. In fact, he wanted the surgeon at the who ended up doing the surgery um, wanted to see the X or the biopsy results. And for some reason, like the full results, they were having trouble sending them from the other clinic that did the biopsy. So he just went over. He walked across the street <laughs> to get it because it's better than sending it through the internet. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, so I get there at 1030 for the screening. What did they call it? The pre-surgery. The consult. Assessment consult. Yeah. So um, they did some more chest x-rays on her because obviously there's no reason to amputate if she has cancer in her lungs because then she's going to die very quickly anyway. So then we would have just brought her home and had a couple of good days. Um, but that was fine, which we expected. The The vet last week had done a quick chest x-ray. He was trying to do a chest... I mean, he did a chest x-ray of her arm and then was like, I did a quick chest x-ray while I had her back there just to see. And that had looked fine. So this vet wanted to do like a more comprehensive chest x-ray, but we, we were expecting that that would be okay, which it was, which is great so that cancer hasn't spread. Um, he's a very like practical guy. He's like this and this and this and then this. And I was like, okay, so, um, you know, we're going to get her a prosthetic. He's like, don't do that. Prosthetics don't work on dogs. And I was like, well, this is this thing. He's like, no. He's like, go ahead and get it. I won't help you with it. But if it works, come back and tell me. He's like, I've told other people that. And none of them have come back and told me. And I was like, okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, plenty of dogs do fine on three legs. Our concern with hops has been, you know, she has arthritis in her other leg. Um, so far, it looks like she's fine. But if it does start giving her trouble, I will still consider a prosthetic. You know, if, she, if she, the arthritis in her remaining elbow starts bothering her, you know, then we'll think about it. But it seems like she's doing okay. Um, and yes. go ahead. So that's the consult. Yeah, it took, took to like one or something. Yeah, yeah, and so basically it's like, okay, they're going to take the take her arm off. He explains, you know, they take the scapula, obviously all the bones and stuff. Um, the scapula is the shoulder blade on that there's, side. There's nothing left. It's down to the chest, yep. essentially. It's smooth. <laughs> Indeed. And he's like, so, you know, obviously we'll keep her overnight. Um, we don't really know when she'll go home. We're going to see how she does. Because some dogs will have the surgery and then they don't want to get up, right? They just refuse to stand up. And so you kind of have to be picking them up and, you know, hold, supporting them. And they, they just refuse. Some dogs just permanently refuse. They're like, I'm nope. This isn't working. Yeah. I like, I'm done. I, I, I always pushed off with that other leg. But yeah. then, like, your dog dies, basically, because they just won't. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're just like, no, like I won't. Um, and, you know, usually that's not the case, but, you know, it's like, well, we got to see how well she gets around. So maybe she'll, so the surgery was Thursday. Mm -hmm. It's like, probably it'll be Saturday that she goes home. If she's doing great, she could go home Friday. We may keep her till Monday. And we're like, whatever is fine. Yeah. So then we get a call. We're like waiting. Okay. And... Like, dear dad hung out for a while. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to, because he's like, I've got to do some other tests and stuff. Eventually, dear dad's like, I'm just going to head home. If I need to go back for any reason, I'll turn around and go back. So, dear. They, they were they were saying, oh, we got to wait for the x-ray results from her chest. That's right. Before yeah. we totally, there's a, a small but non-zero chance that if there's something in the x-rays, you can just pick her back up. Essentially, we won't do the surgery. Right. So, yeah. I, so I was like, well, I'll just hang out in Miami, go to Petco or something. And, and eventually, like, I'm coming home. Yeah. So. Uh, I think you get home. We're like waiting for oh, the yeah. surgery to start, right? They're like, we'll call you. They were going to call you with the x-ray results. We will call you right before she goes into surgery. We will call you after surgery. So we're sitting around. It's a three-hour drive. It's your dad's home. We're sitting around waiting. Yep. And uh, finally, okay, chest x-rays are fine. She's going to go in for surgery. And then fucking waiting. <laughs> like, what? What's going on? I mean, it was like... 7.15. Was it 7.15? That the doctor called and said, yeah, yeah, we're getting ready for surgery. Getting ready for surgery, but uh, 
she has a skin infection and it looks like it's MRSA, which is a uh, antibiotic resistant staph infection. Not good, not what you want. He's like, so the risk of that, and he had talked about this a little bit with respect to the fact that she already had an infection in that incision, like infections will prevent you from healing. So he's like, the fact that it's infected, like since it probably just started, should be fine. It's far enough away from like the shoulder and we'll cut that infection off. But now he's like, okay, well, she has a, looks like she has a skin infection. It looks to me like it's MRSA. We have to culture it and send it out. So there's now a greater risk with doing this surgery because if she has this infection, it can prevent the the wound from healing where, you know, where the leg was. But it takes five days to do a culture and that thing's already infected, you know, at the, at the wound site. And so, you know, there's risk with waiting too. And I'm like, you know, getting ready to ask questions. He's like, I guess we could do it and then just, because I, I, my question was going to be, can we just treat her for the MRSA and have you do the surgery? And he's like, I mean, I, we could do that. He's like, it's expensive. I was like, does not matter. <laughs> like, yeah. Like we have insurance and money. Like it's some, it has to be the, the most high powered antibiotic because MRSA is resistant to everything else. Right. Yeah. It's uh, and, but I mean, he was very careful. He's like, I called an internist at this other place to talk through it. You know, th- this wasn't just like, Oh, I just want to advise you. He's like, I don't really know. Like this is a real kind of borderline case, but, um, we're like, yeah, treat her. He's like, yeah, there's no law that says I can't do that. <laughs> he's like, people might look at it weird that I'm giving her this antibiotic and we haven't got the color. He's like, it's fine. There's nothing that says I can't do that. Uh, I'm like, great. Like, you did do that. say that during the consult too. He's like, there's no rules on veterinarians. There's yeah. no laws. <laughs> Things I couldn't do on humans, I could do it on, on dogs. Jared, did you get to Keep your face close to the mic there. Say T- something. Touching it. <laughs> now I'm touching it. <laughs> That's- Maybe just a little too close. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> uh, so anyway, they took her in at like 7, 730. I think we got a call at 1030 when they were done. I mean, it's yeah. a long surgery. It took a while. And then she has to come out of anesthesia too. Yeah. So anyway, she did fine. Got that. And then we got a call in the morning, right? Pretty early in the morning from. Yeah. So we tech. had, we had called, I had called just to, to talk to like the overnight tech who you know what they can basically say is oh yeah you know she slept well tonight or oh you know she had a fever but we did this to treat it like just give you general stuff i wasn't looking for like a surgery update just a how she feeling thing and uh they're like oh you know this person is you know on the phone they'll give you a call back and that's like an hour and a half later (laughs) we get a call but it is not from the overnight tech it's from the surgical tech who is work who works with the surgeon yeah um this guy's awesome luis love him i mean he's so smart He's so engaged. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so he's like, you know, she's doing great. Overnight was fine. Um, She ate a ton of food this morning. He's like, she did have a fever at one point, but I think it's just because, you know, all like the stress of everything of like getting up and she was working really hard because she didn't have a fever before that. And then she didn't have a fever after that, but we're going to check it and like, just make sure he's like, but she's getting up and she's laying down and she's like, everything's fine. Like, he's like she popped right up. She he's, popped right. He, he sounded like pretty amazed at how well she was getting around. And we're like, well, she hasn't really been using the no longer their leg. Yeah. Uh, the there, but not their leg. Uh, <laughs> for a while, she's kind of used to it. And he's like, you know, we'll keep monitoring her, but sh- she should be ready to go home today. I think he said the way she is and is being we can't keep her. <laughs> there's, there's no way we can keep her, right? Because she's doing, she was eating and all the things that are good indicators. Yeah. And they do better at home, right? If they don't need the medical monitoring, they do better at home. Nor- so normally, if you don't have a Vood around. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Vood hasn't done anything. Don't worry. Yeah. So yeah, we got a call at like one thirty, and uh, dear dad, you know, finished some stuff up, headed up there, got her, brought her home. So she was home by what, 1030 last night, 11? It's close to 11. Yeah. And, uh, I had, so in the meantime, I'm like, okay, you know, she's going to be sore. Um, from the stuff I've been reading, they don't necessarily have great traction, you know, cause they're moving in a totally different way. We want to make sure none of the dogs are kind of going to get all up on her. And, uh, you know, some of the stuff was like, you know, you've got to kind of keep them confined. You should plan to sleep with them wherever they sleep, 
you know, for the first couple nights. So I was like, okay. So I took my office, which was our guest room. We have a Murphy bed in there. So I like set it all up as a bedroom. I got all the rugs out of the RV. So like, there's no bare floor in there. Moved like the little stand with the water bowl in there. I'm like, okay. So like, it's so cozy. It, it's a very cozy little spot. She, there's a bed in there. There's like rugs. We're going to sleep in, you know, one of us will sleep in there. One of us will handle the rest of the dogs. We'll close the gate. This is where Remy normally eats. And so she gets home. I'm like, okay, put her in there and like close the gate and then, you know, we'll let all the other dogs calm down and she can have her spot. So I had the, all the crazy dogs out on the porch, come in, put her in there. Fine. She kind of lays down doing great. I mean, looks really good. And, uh, we fed her. She ate. That's good. Oh yeah. So uh, not that we normally talk about this, but like one thing with dogs is that after they go through that anesthesia, they, it can take a while before they poop again. Um, and, and that also can happen with some of the pain medicine. So they always tell you, like, don't freak out if your dog doesn't poop for a couple of days. And so he was like, look, it can, the tech was like, it can be, you know, four days, up to four days. Don't, don't worry. worry. And so we get her out of the car when your dad got her home. And she's like, I have all my business to do, you guys. Give me a minute. Did she everything. She tripod her around and, and did her stuff. It was yeah. amazing. Good. Yeah. So we've got her now up here in the room. And uh, she ate her dinner, and then she's like, could I come out, please? And I was like, no, you can't come out. And Vink's like, I would like to go in and see my sister. So I let Vink in, and then Hobbs is like, I'm coming out, you guys. And so after, I'm like, let's just let her out and see what happens. And she, like, walked right over to her normal spot, laid down. Yeah. It, everyone, everyone left her alone completely? It's fine. It was bedtime. She's like, I'm... I'm going to sleep in front of your bathroom door, just like I always do. Yeah, She's so been totally fine. A little bit more slumping when she lays down, but not much more. She really wasn't using that leg at all. Yep. So she's getting around just like normal. So yeah. she's, you know, she's on basically the same meds as before. She's on Rimadyl, which is like an anti-inflammatory, kind of like a dog Advil, sort of. Um, and then gabapentin, that's also a human medicine. It's good for nerve pain. And she's on... more a lot more gabapentin than she was, which can make her sleepy. So she is sleeping, which is great. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Heal up. Um, but getting up fine, walking around, like while we're podcasting, she just like got up, went over, had a yeah. drink, laid back down. If you, if you don't notice, she, you don't even notice. She just like no. shows up at a different spot all of a sudden. Yep. Yeah. It's like, wait, why is she facing the other direction? No, she got up and turned around and <laughs> laid down facing right. the other direction. So she's doing just amazing. I'm very encouraged. Um, you know, obviously we have to hope everything goes well with this healing up, but basically the process is, uh, we take her back on Tuesday. We're going to see the surgeon here in the keys. He's down here on Tuesdays in the keys. So we have an appointment. I made the appointment already to your dad. Nice work outside. getting stuff done. So I think three in the afternoon on Perfect. Tuesday, Perfect. she will, um, get to see the surgeon and the tech. They both come down. And, uh, and then after two weeks, her, her incision, uh, or her sutures come out of the incision, it's all bandaged now. So we haven't seen it and that's it. Yeah. Basically. I mean, they say they're going to change the bandaid. It's kind of like a, a medieval knight's chest plate. I mean, <laughs> it's not, it's like the whole chest is covered in. Yeah. It's like around her neck, around her chest. Bandage, yeah. Um, but yeah, once that's healed in two weeks, assuming, um, like, then that's it. Then she's allowed to run and climb stairs and whatever. And assuming the soft tissues are all healed well, right? Sometimes they'll take the sutures out and there'll be, like, a couple little spots that haven't, like, fully healed over. Um, you know, if that that's not unusual if that happens. And so then it might take another week. But as soon as that soft tissue is all healed, she's allowed to go swimming. She's allowed to do everything. Like, that's it. She's done. She yeah. just does not have that leg anymore. And she life continues you should detour into the saga of the leg oh my god i can't we almost I got it, it. <laughs> we almost got it so hops is in the morris animal foundation golden retriever lifetime study so is vink hops is one of the first dogs that got in vink is one of the second podcast about that <laughs> yeah well we did a whole episode about it i think too yeah we did yeah um so it's three thousand golden retrievers they enrolled between six months when between when they were six months and one year old um and it kind of took about a year like is it hops was one of the first dogs to get in vink was one of the very last dogs to get in and they're just a year apart um and then 
you can revisit the podcast for all the details, but basically the point of the study is to follow these 3,000 golden retrievers over the course of their life and study specifically cancer because goldens tend to get a lot of cancer. Um, so when you sign them up, like, and every year they do like, they take a ton of blood samples, nail clippings, fur, they measure the height, the weight. You have to fill out the survey that takes like 45 minutes to say like everything they eat and every surface they lay on and where your water comes from and what their bowls are made out of. And yeah. uh, do they eat vegetables with their food? Yes. What kind of vegetables? Like carrots. How much carrot per day? Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, uh, but do you have a lawn? Do you, you know, I mean, it's just. Do everything. your neighbors treat their lawn for pesticides? Do you treat your lawn for pesticides? Everything. It's a Is lot it of data. Well, water or municipal water. How often do they swim? Is it in a creek? Is it in a lake? Is it in the ocean? Swimming pool. Yeah. Yeah. What do they lay on outside? Is it grass? Is it concrete? How much of each one? Is it in the sun? Is it in the shade? Uh, so there's, great. it's a ton of stuff. Every year you do that. Um, they ha have a whole vet visit and then. Every time they go to the vet, the vet has to tell the Morris Animal Foundation what happened. Oh, the poor vets at, at, <laughs> at Marathon. Uh, so, you know, when they get their vaccines, they the Morris Animal Foundation gets like the lot number of the vaccine and all this stuff. So the whole point of this study is to study cancer in golden retrievers. And now we have a golden retriever so with cancer. We have some bad news and some good news. <laughs> so... I was like, if, you know, if your dog dies of cancer, you agree that they can do an autopsy. And we actually have autopsy kits for both hops and vink. I think they're still up in Maryland, but, um, wait, a home autopsy. No, 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 no. We have a kit that we would bring to the vet and the vet would do the autopsy. Ugh. Oh my God. No, we would terrible, <laughs> but it's like, okay, well they obviously want to know about her having this cancer. Yeah. Uh, it's big data. Yeah. So fortunately, our our vet, one of the techs at our vet was like totally on top of this. She called the Morris Animal Foundation and was like, all right, well, we've got this dog with cancer. Like, what do we do? And they're like, well, we need a sample of it. And so I, th I think it must have been the night of the surgery, mm -hmm. like really late. We get a text from our vet. I mean, like 1030 or 11 p.m. And she's like, I am really sorry to ask you guys this, but um the Morris Animal Foundation wants a sample, like it'll just fit in a jar. I already talked to the surgeon. Would you mind bringing the jar back down if you can't? And from, I was like, sure. From Miami to Maryland. From America. Miami. Yeah. And we're like, I'm like, sure. I'm like, except Ingo left already. And she's like, that's fine. Like, he'll save it. He'll bring it down when he comes on Tuesday. Great. And then they're like, the next, I think the next day they're like, the Morris Animal Foundation wants the leg. <laughs> and I'm like, we want the leg too. We would like the leg. <laughs> She's like, oh my God, would you be okay bringing the leg? And I was like, we want the leg. Like, yes, we will 100% bring oh hops goodness. and then separately her leg. It would be just gold. <laughs> I'm like, I'm excited about this idea, Dr. Lisa. We're 100% bringing the leg. And uh, then she's like, oh, you know, we talked to the Morris Animal Foundation and they're fine with like the surgeon just sending the leg to a lab who's going to do the thing. And, I, <laughs> and she's like, so you don't have to bring anything. And I was like, Dr. Lisa, we really wanted the leg. <laughs> <laughs> she must think I'm very strange now. Uh, but we almost got the leg. Oh, that would have been Hopper's right leg. It would have been the whole thing. <laughs> The it's a fan account just waiting to start. For Halloween. It would have been brilliant. Oh, my God. Oh. I, what I want, fans who are artists, I would like some art of, like... The adventures. <laughs> the floating ghost leg. I, I picture, like, Hop sitting there, like, in the house, and then, like, just the leg floating like ghostly aura around it. Or maybe, like, all the, all the like, angel dogs plus Hopper's right leg. Isn't it called phantom limb syndrome? Yeah. <laughs> I get big Halloween plans. They're, they're, I'm still working them out, but uh, <laughs> but having the leg would have been awesome. Oh, it would have been so good. Yeah, Joe, Dad, you need to pull that mic closer to your face and stop raising it up upside down. I, yeah. am t I haven't moved it at all. all right, hang on a second. Several decibels higher now. I fixed it. Good okay. job. Good job with me. I'm doing what I was doing before. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So anyway, that so, so we didn't get the leg. We didn't get but the leg, but it's here in spirit. I did <laughs> ghost leg. <laughs> uh, I do have a paw print of Hopper's right paw now, which is I more than Hopper has. That's right. Um, so anyway, she's doing great so far. Sleeping well, seems comfortable, happy, getting around. Yeah, uh, she she is 
a lot more comfortable than she was it four days like ago. It. I sent a video, you know, my mom texted this morning and she's like, how's she doing? And I was like, here, I just had taken a video of her and I sent it and she's like, oh, she looks so much better. Like she doesn't have that like pained look on her face anymore. Yes, exactly. And, uh, yeah. And so. she's not freaking out about not having a leg. I don't think she cares. Not at all. It's great. No. Okay. So there's the hops update. Uh, we do have other updates. Let's first talk about the things we have many of. Dogs. In addition to dogs, <laughs> uh, there's there's a couple things we bad now have many of. Bad shark movies. We've accumulated very many bad shark movies. Number one, Blauheis, a yeah. uh, friend of the squad, sent us 10 <laughs> Blauheis to the P.O. box. This is so, so epic. She told me she was doing this. And I'm like, this is, I have so many plans for these 10 Blauheis. This is amazing. This is because Ikea UK had said that they were planning to discontinue blow highs in 2022. And I was like, oh my God, like we need to stock up. It turns out they're not going to discontinue them. So I wonder <laughs> if that person got fired because like PR from Ikea is like, we have no plans to discontinue blow high in any markets. I think that guy got promoted or that woman got promoted because look at the panic buying. I know <laughs> a lot of people went to Ikea. So anyway, amazing friend of the squad, like who is in Australia and managed to pay for ikea usa blau highs to be sent to us it was quite a process so i knew they were coming a lot of shocks in australia and then i get a call when did they arrive they must have arrived on thursday i was in my in miami or, yeah. or on rob yeah so i get a call wednesday from like ikea delivery logistics these are the guys who deliver the furniture they're not coming <laughs> ups in the mail they're coming on a truck that delivers sofas to our p.o box ikea had to rent a truck for this <laughs> And I'm like, this is hilarious. Like, <laughs> they're going to, de- I'm sure it'll work. They're going to deliver it. So Thursday, I'm like waiting because <laughs> I've got to go pick them up on Thursday. Yeah. You know, like an Amazon box, I can wait a day or so. And so I get a call and I answer it. And it's like, you know, hi, Jen, this is Dave from the UPS store. And I'm just like, <laughs> 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 and that was my answer. And he goes, yeah, they're here. <laughs> I said, I'll be there in about an hour. Pick them up. <laughs> they weren't squished down very much. Or anything, they were just right? in plastic bags. No, they were not deflated or anything. They were just three plastic bags. They're giant. With, uh, it was huge. But I was managed, I was able to carry them all myself. Nice. Yeah. I didn't get, <laughs> there was like a line and I'm like, the sharks are mine. He's like, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so I just took all the sharks. They were just like out in the store. <laughs> took all the sharks, threw them in my car. That's very good. Yeah, so there's some great pictures of all the sharks. And I took one yesterday where I had put them all on my chair in my office and then guac is up there like holding one. I sent it to Ikea and they're like, this is amazing, Jen. Thank you for sending us this picture. We're really glad he likes his blow highs. We've now made the decision not to discontinue. This <laughs> Thank you, Professor so, Golbeck. So that's the thing that we have many of and I've got a lot of plans for some photo shoots with those blow highs. Have we lost one yet? No, it's somewhere a little damaged and chewed upon, but no one's been ripped. Pieces. one has a hole and uh, voods was chewing on one and we can't really let voods ha- we can't really have stuffed toys in the house because voods will eat them and he swallows the stuffing and then his pills nest in there and then he doesn't absorb his pills and he'll have a seizure so we really can't have them around um you know it's one thing we can give a blow high to the dog they can destroy it we clean it up it's fine Right. But we can't just have stuffed soft toys in the house. So the blau high has been dragged out by some dog and Voods is chomping on it. And I was like, all right, he's got roughly seven seconds left before I take that away. <laughs> but let's let him have that. And I think Vink came over and licked my face and I turned <laughs> and looked and Voods is sn- just snarfing down stuffing. the stuffing. And I think he has a mouthful of stuffing. So I reach in his mouth and pull it out. It's like down his throat. I'm like hand down his throat, pulling like, stuffing out. Food, 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 food. You're like, how not food, food. how did you get that much in your throat that fast? It wasn't even penetrated so when I looked away. One thing about Boots is when he wants to, he's super fast at everything. Yeah, that's true. But normally he's super slow. Yeah. He's deceptive. Uh, anyway, I put the stuffing back in and the blau high needs a couple stitches, but it's fine. Uh, so that's one thing we have a lot of, blau highs. The other thing we have a lot of is easy cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Squeeze cheese. <laughs> Ingo makes fun of me because occasionally I buy a lot of a thing You had on a 20 Amazon. dozen egg incident. That, that was just a typo. Well, maybe this was too. No. This was the wrong answer. On Amazon, it's, 
you go like, oh, I'm going to buy one of these things. Like I thought for Chief Brody at one point, we thought we'd maybe have to wipe down his tinkler when he came in to keep him from getting UTIs. So I thought I had bought a package of baby wipes and I bought a crate of baby wipes. Yeah. I just threw those out finally. I'm like, we're not going to use 8,000 baby wipes. <laughs> we haven't used eight baby wipes. I'm not sure I'll use a dozen cans of string cheese. Yeah, you thought he either. was buying one can of easy cheese. <sighs> and it's 12. You have a dozen cans of easy cheese, you guys. It's a small battery of easy cheese. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, So that's things we have a lot of. In other dog medical news, uh, Voodoo got a test on Tuesday for his phenobarbital levels, which look fine. They're right in the middle, which we're sort of disappointed by by, because we wanted them to look high so we could give him less phenobarbital because then he can move around better. But we talked to the neurologist, and the plan is that once he has been two months without seizures, so it's been about a month now, so once we're in like the beginning of November, if he continues without seizures, then we're going to try to cut out a different medicine that he's on because the dose, the dose he's on is really low. Like it's below even the starter dose. Of this other medicine, of the potassium. The right? potassium bromide, like he's on, on just less than you'd normally start a dog on. So she's like, I don't really know why he's on that, but you got to be really careful when you take medicines away. So that's the first thing we're going to try to take away. And then we'll see how he does with that. Should, so we, should we have one of those charts that's like, however many days since the last seizure and then it goes back to zero i have one of those i oh, got a whole like on the wall log. with chalk no. it's 14 days since the last fatal accident hmm. <laughs> okay fine um i think it's funny yeah well you guys can subscribe to Jared Dad's OnlyFans. <laughs> and frankly, that would give me an outlet because then I would not have to hear all these jokes because he could tell them to people on the internet who think they're funny instead of me. You're sure as heck wouldn't subscribe. <laughs> I'm not paying seven bucks to hear stuff that I'd prefer you not say in the first place. <laughs> you give me seven bucks to not say it. Uh, can I do oh. that? Oh, that'll be your OnlyFans. It'll be the inverse. It'll just be me being quiet for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> can I pay you $7 to not make bad oh, dad jokes? I'm going to charge you more for that. <laughs> oh, I will pay it. Uh-huh. Name your price. Priceless. Um, okay. In other good news, the elevator's getting fixed on Wednesday. <sighs> oh, my God. I called them yesterday, and I was... Cause we ha- so one friend of the squad is like, I have a friend who does elevator repair. So if you tell me the part you need, he might have it. And I was like, cool. And I also... We're, we're that desperate. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to use every source I know to find this part. Because I'm sure, you know, they have places that they order from. You were almost flying to China <laughs> to like knock on factory doors. So I called them and I was like, guys, where's the part? Like... If you, if you don't have the part, I have potential ways to go find this part. And they're like, well, the part has shipped. It's on its way to us. We are planning to be at your house on Wednesday. And I was like, great. That's fantastic so, news. So uh, the elevator is going to get fixed. Because Voods is getting better. He can voodle his way down the stairs now. Yeah. But he prefers that I lift him. <laughs> he also, w- when properly motivated, can go up the stairs if he's got like a boost on his butt. So I can, now this is, gets acrobatic. I can hold the treat in one hand oh, out in no. front of his head and put the other hand behind his butt. The carrot and the stick. I am at both the, same the carrot time. and the stick and walk him up the stairs. And, uh, and that that works usually when we're about five steps from the top i just throw the treat onto the landing and then he <laughs> then he tries real hard to get there fast but I can use like a gecko <laughs> both legs on the butt uh we are both because i i told the guy i'm like we've been car- the elevator guy i'm like we've been carrying two dogs up and down the stairs like i've been carrying hops part of the time too yeah. and dealing with foods i'm like we're both getting hurt like dear dad's like my back's sort of getting a little <laughs> sore and i my shoulders are super screwed up from all kinds of stuff and i have definitely hurt my rotator cuff on the left side like i'm seeing my orthopedic guy about it and i know it's from like it's not a super serious thing this is a you know this happens to me sometimes but i know it is aggravated because i've been carrying hops because it's an awkward position with a lot of weight and and, i never and it's repeated yeah i never do any upper body stuff i mean in part because my shoulders are screwed up right so i'm just not used to holding a lot of weight and there's an 85 pound dog that i'm carrying up and down (sighs) sack of potatoes boots so I can't do foods. But anyway, the last thing I have on my list is Guacoscape, which seems like it was so long ago, but it literally is within the last week. Guaco on was on probation, but we got distracted by other yeah, things. Yeah, that's your story. I was not present for that one. Oh, yeah. He, he, uh, 
he was gone. <laughs> I, was, I let him out with probably Remy, and then I'm, you know, bringing Remy or watching Remy go up the stairs, and all of a sudden, I'm like, where's Guac? Is he in the bushes? Is he behind the RV? You know, I'm like, Guac, 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 what the heck? It's, it's, it's uh, sundown, so it's, you know, getting darker. And all of a sudden, he comes running past the fence from the neighbors. On like the, the other side. Between the fe- <laughs> yeah, he's coming from the neighbors, running past, you know, the edge of the fence on the water line there, and he's soaking wet. So I don't know what adventure he had, <laughs> but he eventually came back, yay. But he he was apparently bored or someone had cat food up the, up the way and he swam over there. He clearly had been swimming. He was fully wet. So yep. Guacaman didn't tell us about his adventures, but he must have had some. Probation, Guac. Where is he right now? Probation. <laughs> Now he now he looks like a little sleepy angel. Yeah, but he's been he's been good after that. He's he's fine. He just gets bored. <sighs> oh <my God. laughs> All right, you got a German word of the week for us? Yeah, if you want to say something is authentic oh. or real, you say wasch echt. It typically like wash truth. Yeah, echt? wash wash authentic, wash real. Yeah, like I don't know exactly why. Is it that because he's you know, hmm. washed in something. Usually, you say it is. He's a asked wasch echt a Berliner, like, or he's wasch echt a Münchner, like it's someone who's. He's like authentically a Berliner. Yeah, yeah. Like, but but I don't know if it's th- the root is from actual washing. Like he's he's washed in that city. Maybe I don't know. I haven't looked it up. Huh. I'm not an etymologist. Etymologist of German, um, but you say wasch echt. Cool. Wasch echt. It's mm-hmm. a good word. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Taste of the Keys. Yeah, we had, I don't have the story in front of me, but there was a, there was an incident where someone was speeding down Route 1, uh, heading northbound, I think he was, uh, 68-year-old guy. Oh, on the Seven Mile Bridge? Yeah. Yeah. Driving like crazy, which, you know, on a two-lane road, some people get this sort of manic state where they think they have to pass everyone, um... Yeah. And he was apparently passing people, you know, at high speeds and riskily, so the oncoming traffic has to swerve. I mean, everybody goes the close to the speed limit, like maybe five miles over in the Keys. Yeah. Everywhere. Because there's so many cops. Yeah. So, but anyway, but so some people think they can save, I mean, probably six minutes uh, over 100 miles by passing everyone in sight and trying to go fast and then hitting, you know, the next car and then the next car. So you're constantly passing. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, but he was doing that until he, on the Seven Mile Bridge, he encountered an oncoming ambulance. Oh, with a patient in it. With a patient in it. So he tried to go swerve into the side of the bridge. He must have been southbound because the an ambulance there would have been going northbound to the hospital in Marathon. Yeah, that's I true. Think. He, yeah. So he, so he hit the side, but then bounced off and hit the ambulance head on. <sighs> um, the guy who was being transported is okay. And I think he's he also survived. The, the, I just pulled the article up. The patient being transported is a sixty year old, sixty eight year old guy. Oh. The driver was thirty six. Okay. Yeah. And it turns out the driver was in a truck that he didn't have permission to use. So technically stolen. Uh, uh, full on stolen. Reported stolen by the owner. Yeah. So he so they actually he went to the hospital. The driver, because he was hurt, and then he kind of walked out of the hospital. And then the police had figured out that he was in a stolen car, so they had to find him arrest him <laughs> and now he's in jail for stealing a car they they didn't arrest him right after the accident because i guess he wasn't necessarily drunk or anything i mean still had to go well they anyway. probably would have been he would have had to show up in court right but they didn't they didn't immediately arrest him yeah so, so he was out the guy in the pickup truck driving badly was southbound towards key west and the ambulance was going north there's a hospital and there's only like three hospitals in the keys there's like one by key west there's one in marathon which is 50 miles away and then there may be a couple like up in key largo like at the tavern near the very top yeah there you're close to miami so a lot, a lot just of go north go miami yeah, yeah. um yeah so and if anything bad happens to you, they just airlift you to Miami anyway. If you if you have a broken limb or anything, they, right. you get airlifted. And where we are. Yeah. So this guy, total jerk. Wow. Well. Don't drive like an idiot in the Keys. It's not worth it. Oh, my God. And be careful. I see so much dangerous passing here because there's no shoulder. Right. It's pretty much just two lanes, like one lane in each direction. 
and like if you're coming from being used to driving like 80 miles an hour on the interstate in the left lane and you get down here and everybody's going like 47 in a 45 for a hundred miles like i get that it can be frustrating but you're on a damn island in the middle of the ocean and that's how life is here so settle down and you, you're not where are you going that's the, the road ends in key west you're not yep. going anywhere you, you can't make time yeah so, and plus i mean it is it's terrible because there's pedestrians and bikes on the on the right and left shoulder. I mean, you and I Everywhere, have yeah. run on the side of the road because there's no no uh, sidewalk on some of these bridges. Like the Seven Mile Bridge you ran, you, you would have been on, on the, the side shoulder. of that if multiple smashing ha- is happening, yep. some pedestrians is gonna get smooshed too. For sure, yeah. It's just terrible. All right, well, thank you for your patience with our delayed podcast. Obviously, we had other shit to do this week. Yeah, this is, we, we usually are pretty timely. This yeah. is one of the first delays. I mean, it takes a leg loss to Man. throw us off this If much. it had been leg loss in the middle of the day, we would have done the podcast too. But like you got, you drove six hours on, when, on Thursday and six hours on Friday and home late both nights. Yeah, that's right. Wasn't, uh, wasn't, to drop her off and pick her up. And, and it wasn't really planned. <laughs> we also could have done it before. Like yesterday, we got the call and I got in the car. Yeah, and, and I guess Wednesday we could, Wednesday you didn't drive, but that was the whole like, we were on the phone with with surgeons and vets here and oh yeah trying to get it all scheduled and when we were finally home and like everything was set it's like nine o'clock we're like should we podcast and we were both like super like frustrated and irritable and it just been a sucky day and i had brought the equipment out the quality would have been low yeah dude i was like we should podcast and i was like or we could not and he's like great let's not (laughs) so it would have been low quality you got better quality now. We we have occasionally tried to podcast when we're both in bad moods from something. I am always in a good mood. <laughs> okay. We've occasionally tried to podcast where I, GR Mom, am in a bad mood from something. And uh, and the podcast goes really bad because Dear Dad will make the kind of jokes that sometimes I get lightly irritated at. And, and then I... I just go. I mean, I, if you paid me more money, I, I would, hate it I when would, you make those jokes. I would cut back on the jokes for and, a little bit more compensation, <laughs> perhaps. And then I'm like, okay, I've got to edit that part out of me being a jerk. And then, uh, and then I'm like, you know what? Let's just not do this podcast right now because <laughs> our, our banter is not good. I'm just going. Hmm. I think people enjoy that banter. <laughs> I, that's what I'm saying. When we're in bad moods, the banter is not fun. Like the the banter is like maybe slightly snippy. Or otherwise very limited. I think people liked it when you threatened to hit me with a sledgehammer one time. Over the coconut. I mean, you would have deserved it for that. I think just generally you were, <laughs> you were discovering the joys of using the sledgehammer on booths and you were just, you know. The sledgehammer was like expanding. out for a while. Just yes, sitting there. As a kind of an unspoken threat. <laughs> <laughs> like every time you got mad, you'd look at the sledgehammer and then at me and then the sledgehammer and at me. <laughs> you don't have to say anything. Oh my goodness. I mean, yeah, I exaggerate. Yeah, but I mean things are pretty good. I I have a work trip to Colorado. My my work trips are starting to get canceled again for COVID, but this one is going ahead. Though it's in, I I was talking to them last week and they're like, "We don't know how many people are going to come." Like they're I think there's a bunch of people coming to this event, but they're setting it up so like the talk is being simulcast. I'm I'm in like a ballroom um at a hotel very nice hotel this is one of those super fancy hotels i could stay at but they're simulcasting my talk out onto the outdoor terrace so you can sit outside and they'll have a jumbotron out there stadium it's in a stadium (laughs) but that way you know because i don't do any indoor stuff except for these work events and i'm like very careful but it's like this is how we make a a lot of our money is me doing these things and so i'm not going to just not work i can't you know and so I'm very careful and like it's the only stuff I do inside. If I were at a conference, I mean, I probably wouldn't go. But if I did, if they had an outdoor way, I'd 100% be outside. So it could be me in a mostly empty ballroom with a bunch of people outside (laughs) watching me. Uh, In any case, I was like, oh, God, like Hops is just going to get home from the surgery and then I'm going to leave and you're going to be stuck with all this like complicated stuff. to do." She's fine. I feel so much better. She's better than she was. She's remarkably better. We were really stressed on wednesday with the infection and the the, she was so hurt she was so in pain she was really suffering yeah this is this is much easier yeah so as we sort of said this is why one of the reasons we let her out right we were like 
nobody can step on her bad leg anymore. Yeah. That's what we were worried about before is, is Remy blindly, innocently stepping on her hurt leg and making it intolerable for her. Well, it's not going to happen. Yeah, like, I guess he could hit, like, her heavily bandaged part, but, like, that's a... That's like the body part, which is harder to trip over than like the legs that sort of stick out. Yeah. And she's great. She's doing great. Sleeping and eating, which is something we should all be doing to recover from things. That's right. Um, all right. Well, uh, yeah, we'll keep you all updated. But like, hopefully we are now emerging from like dog problem land, like voodoo seizures are stable. You don't believe in Hopper's, jinxes at all. I do don't. You? Hopper's I like, leg is good. I am like cringing right he, he now. He literally cringed when I said I'm that. I'm cringing. You can't, <laughs> I am a scientist. You can't. Oh. There's, there's no such thing as jinxes. Oh. Uh, you know, Remy still needs some work, but we're getting there. So He's a good boy. Uh, oh, crap. Like, as I'm just about to sign off the podcast, I did forget. Here, last minute Remy update. This is a good test for people who listen the whole way through. Yeah, that's you right. thought you were just going to get the credits. I don't care usual. about Taste of the Keys. Uh, <laughs> Remy, uh, so we did, we had Remy into the vet, was it last week, I guess, for his blood glucose? Who know. knows? So we, we put him in and he got a bunch of blood work and stuff. We thought that was going to be for his surgery and it turns out we still have some work to do but we got his results back and he does have a uti what is it with our male dogs and utis well this is diabetic dogs because they get glucose if their blood sugar is too uh. high which his is they have glucose in their urine which makes it a nice little place for bacteria to brew and grow so it's very common this is why the ophthalmologist won't do the surgery without a urine culture like not even just a uti test but a culture mm. to make sure there's because the risk to the eyes of getting infected after the surgery is so high that they won't do it if there's any infection anywhere oh. and they diabetic dogs often have urinary tract infections and so um the culture came back and it's a, a pretty mild infection but you know we can't do the surgery until that's treated so he's on antibiotics now which is going fine um and We'll see. I sent, I, we did a glucose curve this week and I sent it off to our vet and I suspect we'll have to increase his insulin one more time, but we're getting closer. So that's our main thing left. And he's a good boy. He's playing with boots now. He's, he's getting better. Uh, for sure. He's settling in. He, I mean, he seems super happy and, uh, you know, we've got to do some work on his lack of training, but he's learning and yeah, he and boots played, he and guac tug now. So it's, you know, once he can see, he's going to just be like crazy playing with everyone and it'll be great. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So that I think is all the updates. P.S. Yeah. That was the P.S. P.S. Also Remy. Also. Uh, all right. Well, until next week, don't bite anyone unless they ask you to. Yep. Don't bite anyone unless they ask you to. Yes. Good advice, Ingo. <laughs> Bye. Bye.